right, good afternoon and welcome here from Bob Copeland Field here at Rochester High School and finally the home opener for the Rochester Zebras here for the 2024 baseball season. Val, we were supposed to do this last night. The weather did not cooperate with us, so we're going to do it here tonight. The Culver Academy Eagles coming in on only their third game of the year. They're 2-0 and on the season Game number seven here for the Rochester Zebras. Right, Culver Academy's two previous games were against Westville and Morgan Township, so I think this is going to be a step up in competition for them. As for the Zebras, boy, are they scoring runs. 56 runs in six games, so what, nine and a half runs a game. Hitting 320 as a team. Yeah. As a team batting average, not bad. Uh, we'll see uh, how they, they can keep the other team off the scoreboard because they're coming off a 20-15 to 15 loss to Plymouth on Tuesday. Tanner Reinerts on the mound tonight. We expect Tanner Reinerts and Carson Pollock to get – the lion's share of the conference innings this year. So I, I imagine this is setting up Tanner, who will start that Wednesday game against Southwood, right. which is the conference opener. Again, we know about Tanner's stuff. I mean, he throws in the upper 80s with that nasty slider, but he's also got a curve. Um, he's, been a little, he's been a little walk prone so far, so let's see if Tanner, again, if Tanner gets the ball in the strike zone, he's going to be hard to hit. Yeah, when he's got his stuff, it's uh, it's almost impossible to hit. So it's going to be a good matchup here. We, you know, the academy is kind of one of those teams that from year to year you really don't know what you're going to get, and especially when you're playing them this early in the season because they do have so much fluctuation. You know, somebody could come in from Spain. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you, you don't know what you're going to get from year to year. You can't look and say, okay, well, they had to – the junior high program did this or, you know, anything like that. So um, it's a good test here for the Rochester Zebras. I, I know uh, usually they uh, they compete pretty well at the academy. Rochester beat the academy by a 10-run rule last year. I think it was 20-9. Mm -hmm. And I believe Culver Academy led that game. I think it was like 8-7 to seven going into like the sixth inning and Rochester scored 13 runs. Yeah, up at I mean, Culver. The, yeah, I mean, that, and that's the way the Zebras were last year. I mean, they could just – just throw a haymaker at you and just <laughs> end the game quickly. Uh, but, again, this is a Culver Academy team. Uh, they've got uh, – I'm counting – let's see here. I'm counting three seniors on their roster, but only one of them is in the starting lineup today, and that is uh, the leadoff hitter. Should we go over lineups? Yeah, go ahead. For Culver Academy, Jack Quigg will lead off and play third base. He's the one senior in their starting lineup. Batting second is shortstop Ty Rakin. Batting third is the catcher, Foster Stockton. Batting cleanup is their pitcher, Maxwell Grunberg. Batting fifth is second baseman, Preston Jessen. Batting sixth is the center fielder, Jack Christensen. Batting seventh is the right fielder, Charlie Menard. Tommy Kelly will bat eighth and play left field, and batting ninth and playing first base is Jack Kaplan. Rochester going with Coleman, Pollock, and Reinerts, the top three. Cypher, Young, Fervita, the middle three. Brant Beck, Brady Beck. Casper, the bottom three. First pitch of the game from Reinerts to Quigg. Strike over the outside corner. Jack Quigg is a senior. He is from Faribault, Minnesota. So if you have good viewership numbers from Faribault, Minnesota today, <laughs> Steve, that explains that it. That explains it. Hit by a pitch. Oh. So a good start for the academy. And they'll bring up the shortstop, Ty Rakin. Has Ty been Rakin this year? Let's look. Yeah, he has been Rakin. <laughs> Four for eight. Hitting 500. I would say, yeah, hitting 500 so far on two games. Uh, and two of his hits have gone for extra bases. He's got two singles, a double, and a triple. Puts the first pitch in play. Left center. Fervita makes the catch. Quig hangs on it first. It is windy. It seems like a crosswind. Yeah, kind of kind of going from right to, to left a little bit and in just a hair. So I think that one kind of got knocked down by that wind. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see too many go out, but you never know. Foster Stockton is the batter. He's hitting 286 on the young season, two for seven. But he does have two RBIs and four runs scored. He's in the count here, one and zero. Oh. 
strike. Not every area high school baseball field kind of has recovered the way this field has recovered. For example, Tippecanoe New Valley was expected to host Bremen tonight, and that was a really kind of a, an interesting game. I was looking forward to seeing how Valley would do, again, taking on a 2A sectional champion in the Bremen Lions, but mm -hmm. that game has been postponed to Tuesday. And, of course, Caston is now playing Clinton Prairie at low field. They're not playing at home against North White like we thought they were. And that Winnemac rensselaer game has also been rained out. There goes Quig, pitches a strike, and he'll steal it. Looked like Cypher had trouble gathering. And again, Quig, Quig seems to have pretty good speed. 2-2 two two the count to Foster Stockton. Yeah, that's what you want from your leadoff hitter, so mm -hmm. you know, get them on and, and keep them moving. Outside. Foster Stockton is a junior from Richmond, Virginia. Foster. That's not a name you hear a whole lot. Grounder left side. Takes off the glove of Young in the left field. Quig will move it to third and stop there. Call that an E5. Yeah. Not going to get too crazy tonight with the camera work, uh, just me and you. So the interns were both off today because uh, they didn't have school, I guess, here. So they're off. Chris is off. So just going to kind of give you a, more of a fixed shot of this one. But we'll try and make sure that you can see pretty much everything that's going on. Here's one of their big bats, Maxwell Grunberg. Snap throw back to third, safe. Hanging out at first is Stockton. Maxwell Grunberg is four for four on the young season. Well, that's even better than four for eight, isn't it? Yeah, and four for four with three RBIs and five runs scored. He is a sophomore from Hinsdale, Illinois. Strike. What, three of the first four batters have been left-handed? Strike. So it should be interesting to see if how many sliders Tanner throws to the lefty hitters. Can he bury that in on the foot? Because mm -hmm. if you if you can get it in on that back foot, it's a great pitch. But if you miss your spot, it's and he got him swinging. I think that might have been the slider to the back foot. I was going to say if you miss your spot and it hangs out over the plate, yeah, you're asking for trouble. But that is the first time Grunberg has been retired all season. And that is the second out of the inning. Base runners hold it first and third, and that will bring up the second baseman, Preston Jessen. Is he from Plymouth? Swing and a miss. Yes, he is. I thought that name sounded familiar. Is he a junior? Yes, he is. Yep. He is... Five for six, and that ball gets away, and here comes Quig, and he will score. And advancing the second on the play is Stockton. Yeah, Preston was on that 12U town and country team that I've talked so much about with Rochester and Plymouth. Uh, Tanner on the mound was, you know, on that team as well. Of course, the Zebras faced Plymouth. Fly ball to right. Brand Beck makes the catch, and that retires the side. So for Culver Academy in the top of the first, one run on no hits, one error, and one left. In a half an inning, Culver Academy leads Rochester one to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field after half and inning. The Culver Academy Eagles leading your Rochester Zebras 1-0. For the Zebras coming up to the plate here on their first at-bat here at Bob Copeland in 2024. See if the uh, hot bats of the Rochester Zebras continue here, Val. They've been uh, really 
hitting the ball well through their first six games. Yeah, um, and of course, you know, Corey Good, I mean, he uses that same word that he's always used, which is approach. It was a sport he used especially a lot last year, and he's continued to use it this year. But having the right approach at the plate, and they've clearly been doing that. And the thing is, is that they're not, there's not one way you can get them all, all out. You have to kind of be able to almost adjust from batter to batter, and that's not going to be easy to do. So curious to see how Maxwell Grunberg does against this Rochester lineup. Again, it'll be Brady Coleman, Carson Pollock, and Tanner Reinerts, the top three. Jake Seifer, Gavin Young, and Colton Fervor to the middle three, and Brant Beck, Brady Beck, and Parker Casper, the bottom three. First pitch from Grunberg to Brady Coleman. Low. Brady is hitting 368 so far in this freshman campaign. Seven for 19, but maybe more impressively, he's scored nine runs already wow, in five yeah. games. I you mean, know, that's, that's saying something to be a freshman mm -hmm. and to be the first one up, to be the leadoff hitter. That's yeah. That's telling you that Coach Good has a lot of faith in him, and he's really been producing as well. Yeah. Ball three. I was talking with Jim Coleman, who is his uncle. Mm -hmm. Of course, Jim also the Rochester softball coach, and he said, talked about the travel. He plays out of a travel team out of Indy. That's really, uh, really elevated his level of play, and they, they play a really high-level schedule. So a uh, four-pitch walk for Brady Coleman to start things out. So, yeah, Jim Coleman, a very, very proud uncle. Softball update but while we're at it. Rochester leads Culver Community 4 to nothing. bottom of the second. Ground ball left side by Pollock. To second for one, back to first. Safe, wild throw. Pollock will turn, and then I'll head back to the bag. So just a force out. Tanner Reiners will come up. Tanner is also one of the best hitters in the area, a 421 hitter. He has one homer and eight RBIs. Tanner has eight hits on the season, four of them for extra bases. He's got three doubles and a homer. And he leads the team with the eight RBIs, but Cypher has seven. No, excuse me. I was looking in the wrong column. Cypher leads the team in RBIs with nine, but Tanner has eight, and Pollock has six. So you've got three guys averaging an RBI a game. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. Good breaking ball. Jammed him. Making the catch is Kaplan, the first baseman. Two down in the inning. Holding on at first is Pollock. It'll bring up Jake Seifer. Jake is hitting 350. He is 7 for 20. And as we mentioned, 9 RBI, and he's already got a home run. Swings the first pitch, pop foul, out of play. Stockton gave that a, an effort, but ran out of room. Count is 0-1. Throw back to first, see? Pitch is high. There goes the runner, and Stockton's throw is going to be way late. Actually, Pollock will make it in standing up. You know, it was so interesting. I remember talking with Jake was it when he was a sophomore, and he said, man, I'm pulling everything. i got to get in the cage, and i got to stop pulling everything because I'm hitting the ball hard, but I'm hitting it foul all the time. 
and I was like, well, that's a good problem to have. Better than that than to be behind on everything. Ground ball to third. Throw to first is in time, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left. End of one inning. Culver Academy leads Rochester one to nothing. And you're watching RTC. Right back here at Bob Copeland Field as we move into inning number two after one. The Culver Academy Eagles leading the Rochester Zebras 1-0 here in the home opener for the Rochester Zebras. So, Val, you talked about the field conditions. The field looks great. Yeah. I, I don't know. can't tell if the infield's maybe a little spongy there in between the uh, pitching mound and home plate. Looks like you can see maybe some footprints in the grass, but uh, it looks great. The infield dirt is in really good condition. You know, it's not, not any kind of mud or anything like that. So kudos to the uh, groundskeeping crew, which is probably the assistant coaches and the uh, <laughs> the assistant coaches and, and some of the players uh, to, to get this field ready here yeah. for this evening's game. Yeah, there's no – yeah. People think there's a grounds crew who just doesn't. Yeah, no, there's, it's the kids and the coaches who yeah. who prepare the field. Yeah, I saw T.J. Smith out there right after they got done with warm-ups. He was cleaning up some things there uh, on the third base area there. Just wanted to make sure everything was perfect. So mm -hmm. It'll be Christensen, Menard, and Kelly due for Culver Academy here in the top of the second. First pitch from Reinerts is low for a ball. Jack Christensen is 0 for 3 on the young season. He is a junior. And he is from Plymouth. Yeah, okay. I remember that name. Is he a junior too? Yes. Yeah, wow. Center fielder. Yeah, that's two of them that uh, were on that Little League team. Two and one the count. Inside, ball three. Strike two. Base on ball, so in the uh, first walk of the game for Reiner, so he's also hit a batter. Yeah, so both leadoff runners aboard in the first two innings here for the Eagles. Charlie Menard is the batter. He is the sophomore right fielder. And would you care to guess where he's from? He is from Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow. Wouldn't have got that. Lays down the bunt. Young touches it. Throw to first is wild by Reinerts. Everybody's safe, and the throw goes down by the side fence. Brady Beck runs it down, but the runners will advance to second and third. Well, he bunted in the air, but it landed, and it really turned out to be put in a nice spot. So call that, what, a sack and an error? Sack and an E1. It'll bring up left fielder Tommy Kelly. He's a junior from Culver. Strike call. Kelly hitting 250 so far, one for four in the season. But he does have two RBIs. The count is 0-2, so, so we Tanner go can really use a strikeout here. So we go from Alaska to Culver. Yep. Little high there on that one, I guess. Yep. 
One and two. Ball outside, you can see Kelly kind of choking up on the bat a little bit. He's really competing in there. Two and two. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's a it's a full count. <laughs> I mean, he did a nice job of uh, you know being patient there, but got to got to wait until you get four balls there, sure. Three two pitch. Based on balls. Wow. So he battled back. I mean, he was down 0-2 and, and yeah. was able to uh, to get the walk now. Bases are loaded for the Eagles. Jack Kaplan is the batter. He is a freshman. He is the first baseman, and he is from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Ground ball, base hit. It takes, it takes a bad hop off Brady Beck. One run is in, and everybody will move up one base. RBI single for Jack Kaplan. Two to nothing. So Christensen scores on the play. Menard to third. Kelly to second. And now the lineup turns over with the bases loaded and nobody out. Jack Quigg was hit by a pitch and scored last inning. Looks like a curveball outside. Chopper foul. One one. Inside, two and one. I think he was he's trying to throw that kind of that backdoor curve to the lefties. He's having trouble locating it. Two and two. And it goes under the legs of Cypher. Here comes runner trying to score the throw to the plate. Out of the plate. Menard tried to score, but Roy Reinhardt's hustled to cover the plate. It didn't get that far away from Cypher. Take a look at this play here again. Great hustle. Cypher gets the runner. So now runners at second and third with one out, and the count is three and two on Quig. Base on balls. Quick deserves some strawberries for that. It's my cane mutiny humor. I'll giggle like I know what you're talking about there for a second. Maybe I should say quick Bogart's a walk. <laughs> Low to Ty Rakin, who flew out to left his first time. Ball two. Strike. Ty Rakin is a sophomore. He's the shortstop, and he is from Okemos, Michigan. Okemos? O-K-E-M-O-S. Hmm. Pretty good pitch by Reiner. There got it in his hands, and he fouled it off, and a hitter's count. So two and two the count.
We've got a rare appearance of the sun here at Bob Copeland Field. I haven't seen that whole lot here this spring. Yeah. Fly ball to center hit pretty well. Backtracking is Casper. He makes the catch. Runner will tag up and score. They hit the cutoff man. Brady Beck throw to third. Safe. So Kelly scores on the play. Kaplan advances from second to third. Quig hangs on at first. So a sacrifice fly for Raken. Two outs in the inning now. Foster Stockton fouls off the first pitch. Three to nothing. Oh, and two the count. Got him. With the high heat. Strikeout number two for Reinerts. And retires the side. Two runs in the inning on one hit. No errors and two left. At the end of an inning and a half, Culver Academy leads Rochester three to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Bob Copeland Field as we move into the bottom of the second with the Eagles leading 3-0 here after an inning and a half. Val Culver only has one hit for the game, so they've been able to uh, find different ways, and Tanner's struggling a little bit with his command so far here, trying to... Yeah, three, three walks and a hit batter. Yeah. And that's... Uh, it's kind of plagued not only Tanner, but really the entire Rochester pitching staff so far. Softball update, Rochester leads Culver Community, 7 to nothing, top of the third. First pitch of the inning is a strike from Grunberg to Gavin Young. Gavin will be followed by Colton Fervida and Brent Beck. Okay, Steve, time for some trivia. Hmm. Uh, I've, we've decided to go against Cubs birthday trivia this year. We have. That's good. Okay, I have. <laughs> uh, what I've decided to do... And as many of you know, if you follow me on Twitter slash X, you know that I like to play Immaculate Grid every morning. So I thought, let's do what's the most popular Immaculate Grid answer. As the ball ticks off the glove of Stockton and the counts two and two. So I'll go over today's nine answers, and I'll give you a quick guess as to what the most popular answer was, and then I'll... Uh, I'll explain kind of what I did. So the first box today was Phillies and Royals. Can you name a player, the, mo the number one answer, the most popular answer of a guy who played for the Philadelphia Phillies and the Kansas City Royals? Line drive to center is caught. Nice play out there by Christensen. From the Phillies and the Royals? Yeah. All time players? All time. Every yeah. Um, Mike Schmidt. Carlos Santana. Huh? Yeah. Mike Schmidt never played for the Royals. I thought you said Phillies. Phillies and Royals. Did I did I not say Royals? You said Phillies. I was going Phillies. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it okay. <laughs> I was, well, I was going Phillies first because you said Phillies and Royals. Okay. Yeah, and a player who played for both teams. Oh, it played for both teams. Yeah. Now I got Straight you. call. Now you're getting way past my. Yeah. 
Royals and Blue Jays. Can you name a player who's played for the Royals and the Blue Jays? The most popular. Hmm. You know what you should do? Mm -hmm. I got an idea for you on this. Mm -hmm. Give everybody your cell phone number, and we'll do a call-in show. Okay. <laughs> oh, Kaplan can't handle the throw. That's going to be an E3. That was a really nice play by the third baseman, uh, Quig, and he made a nice throw. It was just dropped, so that's an E3. And we know Ferv's got speed. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen that. Yeah, so we know that. So he's on first with one out for Brant Beck. Brant Beck is a 294 hitter, 5 for 17. And three of his five hits are doubles. 1 and 0. A good time for one. Royals and Blue Jays, the number one answer, Whit Merrifield. Hmm. Was right on the tip of my tongue. Okay. Royals and 100 runs scored in a season. Jake, you're free to chime in. Okay. Uh, number one answer for that one, George Brett. Okay. I was going to say, and I uh, this just shows my lack of knowledge of baseball, but I was going to say Brett Saberhagen. I had the Brett part right. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was trying to think. Yeah. Who did uh, he play for? Brett Saberhagen played for the Royals. He won a Cy, two Cy Young Awards with the Royals and then later played for the Mets and the Rockies. Pitches inside, the throw down to second, safe. Well, at least they had the same team. I, I count that as a win. Yeah. I, I have a feeling the Zebras are going to be, they're going to make Foster Stockton throw them out once before they stop running. 3-0 the count to Brant Beck. Base on balls. First and second with one out, and that will bring up the senior first baseman, Brady Beck. Brady hitting 267 on the year. He's four for 15. Okay, Phillies. Phillies and played second base minimum of one game. Can you think of a Phillies second baseman? Strike. To Brady. The most popular one? Yeah, what's the most popular answer on Immaculate Grid? Hmm. Phillies played second base. Oh and two the count. On two curveballs. What did Mike Schmidt play? He was the first baseman. He was the third baseman. Third line baseman. drive down the left field line. That's a fair ball and an 0-2 pitch. Wow. Rounding third and coming into score is Fervida. Moving up to third. I mean, there in the, the throw misses the cutoff man, but Brant Beck will hang on a third. That's an RBI double. For Brady back. Well, you talked about Brant having two doubles. Uh, Brady's like, I can do that too. Well, the Zebras have something cooking here with uh, one down and runners at second and third for Parker Casper. And again, Parker is a 389 hitter. I mean, he's kind of like the second leadoff hitter. I mean, he, again, he's a kid who's beyond his years. He's seven for 18. So a 389, like I said, a 389 average, no homers and two RBIs. He has a double, and he lofts that one in the air. That should be deep enough. It's caught out there, tagging up and coming in to score is Brant back. Hang on a second is Brady back, and it's three to two now. Casper, I just going to say Casper had struck out only three times all year. Coleman swings at the first pitch, and it's a pop-up to shallow center. Coming in, in uh, and it is Christensen, and he makes the catch to retire the side. So the Zebras score two in the bottom of the second. On one hit. One error and one left. End of two innings, and Culver Academy leads Rochester 3-2, to two, and you're watching... RTC team. All right, welcome back here. Bob Copeland Field moving into the third after two innings of play here between the Eagles and the Zebras. Rochester trails three to two, but the Zebras got two there in the bottom of the second, Val. And 
Bats started to go a little bit better for Rochester. Let's see if uh, the Zebras pitching can uh, follow suit Yeah, here. really good at bat by Brady Beck. For Culver Academy, 4-5-6 due in the order, Grunberg, Jessen, and Christensen. Strike. Good start there. So Phillies and second base, Chase Utley. Chase Utley. Chase Utley was, was number on that one. team that won the World Series back in 2008. He's a really good player. Round ball to short. Pollock charges. Throws. Got him. Got him. Nice dig yeah. by Brady Beck. I was going to say, was Joe Morgan a Philly at one point? Yeah, that would have been a correct answer. It wasn't the most popular answer. It wasn't answer, the most popular one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Who all did he end up? He played for... Several teams, didn't he? Well, obviously, when you think of Joe Morgan, the first thing you t think of is the Cincinnati Reds. Right. Back-to-back -back MVPs, won back-to-back -back world championships. But, you know, Joe, he was traded to the Reds from the Houston well, I guess the Astros. I guess they were the Colt 45s back then. <laughs> and then afterwards, Joe played for the – after he was with the Phillies, he played for the uh, the Giants and the A's at the end of his career. That's, what, that's why Immaculate Grid is so fun because – you remember, have to remember guys for all the teams they played for. Followed off by Preston Jessen. Count as 0 and 2. Blue, yeah. Blue Jays and second base. Can you think of a Blue Jay second baseman? Minimum one game. Hmm. Minimum of one game. Grounder left side. This be an easier play for Pollock. Throws. Got him. Rochester getting uh, getting it done here so far in the top of the third. And we always say this about high school first baseman, whether it's softball or baseball, you never realize that you have a good one until they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Luke Hunting was such a reliable guy, and for him to and you know before him, Grant McCarter, and Rochester's had a reliable guy, and so it was, that was kind of a big kind of question mark. But what a nice play by Brady there, and he's really able to hold down that position so far. Blue Jay second baseman. Pop, most popular answer. Come on, Jake. You know this one. <laughs> He's in the Hall of Fame. I'm not much on Blue Jays. Think of early early 90s Blue Jays. Like, okay. <laughs> Roberto Alomar. Mm. Roberto Alomar. Was on those 92 and 93 World Series teams. Foul ball. Second base and 100 runs scored in a season. Can you think of a second baseman who scored 100 runs in a season? The the highest is only 8%, so there's a lot of guys you could pick from. Uh, this guy played for the Astros. In Ooh. fact, he currently plays for the Astros. Is that, yeah. is that in play? Yes, it was. Yeah. Christensen grounds out of the pitcher to retire the side. Oh, Altuve. Jose Altuve is the correct answer. For Clover Academy in the top of the third, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of two and a half, Culver Academy leads Rochester 3-2 to two when you're watching RTC TV. Back here at Bob Copeland Field as we move into the bottom of the third. Zebras still trailing 3-2, to two, but they were able to get the Eagles out. 1-2-3 in the top of the third. Val, things looked a lot better there for Rochester. A good couple of nice plays there by Carson Pollock from his shortstop position. And... See if the bats can uh, keep, you know, going for Rochester. They had a nice bottom of the second. Yeah, well, you get the heart of the order due up here with Pollock and Reinerts and Cipher. Softball update. Rochester leads Culver 9-1. Bottom of the third. <laughs> Mia Houdeshell in the circle today for Rochester over at Fansler. One and zero the count to Pollock. Inside Pollock, rounded into a force out his first time up. Okay, continuing on with Immaculate Grid, Silver Slugger and Phillies. Can you think of a Philadelphia Philly who won a Silver Slugger? Tell me what a Silver Slugger is first. Um, they give that award out every year to the best offensive player at each position. So they give out nine Silver Sluggers in each league. Hmm. 
Base on balls for Pollock to lead off the bottom of the third. They've given out this, they started giving them out in 1980. Hmm. So if you're thinking like, uh, you know, like Richie Ashburn or some old Philly or Chuck Klein, that's not. That was who I was going for, Richie Ashburn. That was the first one on top of my head. Yeah, so that's <laughs> not, yeah, don't go there. Okay. Inside. Is there a position? The number one answer is a f he's a f played first base for the Phillies. And he's the number one answer at 28%. Played first base for the Phillies on that their 2008 World Series team. Big slugging first baseman, left-handed hitter. I mean, just one of those guys who just flicked his wrist and the ball just flew 400 feet. Hmm. Oh, that was behind Reinertsen. Goes to the backstop. Stockton had no chance of stopping that one. A very wild pitch, and Pollock is now at second with nobody out. So let's see if Reinerts has the green light here. 3 0. Nope. Base on balls. Walk number four for Grunberg. Seems like Grunberg's uh, control. A little iffy so far in this inning. Yeah. He's, he's kind of struggling. Yeah, you know, the first time through when he faced Pollock, Reinerts, and Cypher, he was really locked in. It was almost like he found a rhythm. Mm -hmm. and, that, not, and now he's kind of gotten he kind of gotten out of rhythm. And I think his coaches has got the same thing in mind here. He's yeah. going to have a little conversation. So uh, Philly first baseman, Silver Slugger. Uh, Philly Silver Slugger, the number one answer is Ryan Howard. Oh, yeah. Blue Jays, Silver Slugger. Current blue, and by the way, he's a current Blue Jay. He currently plays first base for the Blue Jays. His dad played baseball and was also a very famous player. Blue Jays and Silver Slugger. Who does dad play for? Uh, Expos, Angels, and Orioles. This is his son. He's played his entire career for the Blue Jays. Jake Seifer is up. He grounded a third is back in the first inning. Up with two on and nobody out here. Grunberg's pitch. Just outside. In the dirt, ball two, runners hold. Nice block by Stockton. Ball three, low. Jake moves way up in the box and it's crowding home plate. Strike it. Look, I think Grunberg threw a 3 0 curveball. Yeah. It looked like, or at the very, or he took something off, but yeah. Base on balls, walk number five for Grunberg. He's walked three in a row to start the inning. And I think we're going to have pitch and change at this point, right? Second second visit. Yep, and uh, Caleb Lutz is going to be enter the game as a courtesy runner at first base for Cypher. you got people moving all over the place here. Quigg's moving out to right field from third base. Is this Tennyson? Yes. They list five pitchers on their roster. And this is Will Tennyson, who's a senior from West Dundee, Illinois. And he's entering the game.
Okay, Grunberg is moving from pitcher to third base. Rakin still at short. Jessen still at second. Kaplan at first. Quig is in right field. Did Menard leave the game? He might have. Yeah. Tennyson ahead in the count 0 1 on Gavin Young. Gavin. Uh, came in today hitting 250, 5 for 20 in the year, but with four RBIs. We know what kind of hitter Gavin is. He's he's another big bat in this Rochester lineup. But Tennyson takes a little bit off that breaking ball and gets ahead in the count 0-2. Sometimes you wonder if a guy coming into the game, does he have that feel on that breaking ball, and Tennyson threw a nice one there. In the dirt, nice block. Actually, I might have deflected off Young, but good block by Stockton. Blue Jays and Silver Slugger, the number one answer was Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was the number one answer at 25%. Now, Silver Slugger and 100 runs scored in the season. There are over 200 correct answers on this one. So, Any team? Any team. Fly ball, shallow left center. That's going to be a tough play. It, it, oh, it drops. drops. Throw to third is in time for a force out. Throw to second, safe. That was not infield fly roll. So it's an RBI, fielder's choice grounder. For Gavin Young. Pollock scores on the play. We're tied at three. Reinerts is out. Caleb Lutz now at second, and he just did make it in time. First pitch is up to Fervida. I mean, Rakin seemed like the most surprised guy in the ballpark. That, like, he's thinking the left fielder, and he, maybe he's even hearing the left fielder call for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that ball landed like two feet behind him. Yeah, yeah, about I mean, went in his pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the wind had any effect on it, but uh, it definitely there was about uh, three eagles that really didn't have a clue where that thing was at. But he, and again, the standard for infield fly is with reasonable effort. I don't think that that was not reasonable effort. So it's not a foul ball. Dropped. Dropped. That'll be an error. Count is now two and one. But that's yeah, an it error. Defi it definitely wasn't one of those that uh, you know that can of corn where they're just you know letting it drop. Yeah. <laughs> by any means. And I mean, they darn near threw Lutz out at second. I mean, he had to hustle and slide just to get in there. I mean, yeah. That was, you hate being a base runner in that situation. Wild pitch, and the runners will advance. So Lutz moves up to third. Young now at second. Silver Slugger with 100, 100 or more runs scored in the season. Again, you can name almost any. They, gave, they started giving out Silver Sluggers in 1980, so you can name almost any great player since 1980, and it would be a correct answer. But the number one answer was Barry Bonds, 10%. Mm. Sammy? Yeah, Sammy would have certainly been. Was Mark on the left wing of the line. That might drop. It drops, but it's foul. foul. Just foul by about two feet. Was Mark Grace on that list? I was going to go Mark Grace, but that probably was. Uh, I think Mark Grace scored 100 runs. I, mean, I don't think you ever won a silver. Did you ever win a silver slugger? I don't know. Let's look at him. Okay, I'm going to look him up real quick. Never won a Silver Slugger. Yeah, okay. Foul ball. He did score 107 runs back in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's what I put. And, of course, I was going to impress everybody by getting 9 out of 9, and I didn't. I got 8 out of 9. For Phillies and Royals, I put Jerry Martin. For Blue Jays and Royals, I put Joaquin Soria. For Royals and 100 runs scored in a season, Base on balls, another walk. Fourth walk of the inning. Base is loaded, one out. Brant Beck coming up. I got it wrong for Royals on 100 runs scored in a season. I put Jorge Soler, it was wrong. Jorge Soler's career high for runs scored in a season with the Royals was 95. And as we mentioned, the number one answer was George Brett. Phillies in second base, I put Tony Taylor. 
Blue Jays in second base, I put Darwin Barney. Second base and 100 runs scored in a season, I put Ian Kinsler. 0-1 oh, the count to Brant Beck. Phillies and Silver Slugger, I put JT Real Muto. Blue Jays and uh, Silver Slugger, I put Vernon Wells. And 100 runs scored in a season, plus Silver Slugger, I put Willie McGee, which was 0.3%. Again, I'm trying to get the lowest score possible, but when you get ground ball to the pitcher, throw to first, out, but the run scores, and Rochester has their first lead of the game. RBI ground out for Brant Beck. Two out in the inning. Loot scores on the play. Young now at third and Fervid at second. So a score of 113 for me today. Now Brady back. Fouled off. Brady had an RBI double last inning. Strike. Now the the second run of the inning is charged to Grunberg, but that's an unearned run. That inning should be over, but that um, they dropped Ferv's foul pop up to keep keep his at bat alive, and he wound up walking. One and two to Brady Beck. The only thing I want to know on that uh, immaculate grid that you do, because I got you and Chuck Freebie that b both must really uh, get into that. Mm -hmm. Got him swinging and a breaking ball in the dirt. Play will have to be completed at first, and it is, and that retires the side. Strike on number one for Tennyson. For Rochester in the bottom of the third, they score two no hits. One error, and they leave two. End of three innings. Rochester leads Culver Academy 4-3. to three. You're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here. Bob Copeland Field as we move into the top of the fourth. The Zebras have tacked on two runs in the last two innings, now leading 4-3 here after three. So, like you said, Val, first lead of the game here for the Zebras. Let's see. Uh, they blanked the... Eagles in the last inning. Let's see if they can do it again here yeah. in the fourth. Over in softball, Rochester scores 10 in the bottom of the third, and they now lead Culver 17-1, to one, top of the fourth. Same inning, a little different score. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss to Tennyson, who's leading off the inning. He took Menard's spot on the order. Ground ball. Bobbled a minute by Reinerts, but he gathers and throws to first. Good job there by Tanner. Not panicking there after he dropped that ball. Just collects it and throws over for the first out. And Seems like Tanner settled in a little bit here, Val. Yeah, and that's, again, that's why, again, those travel ball things, again, don't, not panicking if you bobble a ball and knowing how much time you have, that kind of that internal clock, mm -hmm. all that stuff you get from, I think, the more baseball you play, whether it's travel or whatever. Tommy Kelly, the batter, Tommy walked and scored his first time up. A little flirt, a little shallow left field, that's going to drop for a hit. Fervid overruns it, but Casper picks it up and hanging out at first with a single is Kelly. That is the second Culver Academy hit in this game. Yeah, it always amazes me. We were uh, down in Indy at Westfield at Grand Park last weekend for some basketball and 8 o'clock basketball game and go by the, the baseball fields and they're already warming up for, for baseball, travel baseball games. So they they play uh, a lot of games uh, anymore, you know, in that travel system. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of the Rochester kids have played out of the, out of Warsaw. Some play out of Indy. Oh, 
Ground ball to Brady Beck. Steps on the bag, and that's his only play. I don't. If Brady had gone to second base, uh, it would have been a riskier play. He took the sure out instead. Yeah, no, uh, don't disagree with that at all. I don't think they would have had a chance at like a three-six-three double play. That I don't think the ball was hit hard enough. Mm -hmm. Quig has zero for zero, but he's been hit by a pitch and walked. He does put this ball into play. Pollock to first, just to get him. But Quig runs hard and runs well, but. The throw by, and Pollock realized it, and he threw him out. For Culver Academy in the top of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. End of three and a half. Rochester leads Culver Academy four to three, and you're watching RTC TV. Welcome back here, moving into the bottom of the fourth. Val, for Rochester, the bats have been heating up. They've gotten two runs in the last two innings, and they've uh, kept the Eagles off the board in the last two innings, so going the right way. And what have you know, What have I noticed? The first couple innings, Culver Academy was hitting the ball in the air a lot. Last two innings, Tanner has faced seven batters and got six round ball outs. Yeah. So keeping the ball down and they're hitting the ball at the ground. Well, they're not getting their leadoff man on the base yeah. either. That was yeah. uh, what they were doing that first mm -hmm. two innings. So. Yeah, that and he's throwing strikes. Yeah. Okay, 9-1-2 in the Rochester order here in the bottom of the fourth. Casper, Coleman, and Pollock. Freshman, freshman, sophomore. Did he offer? No, says the base umpire. I'm not sure the Culver Academy fans were wild with that. and They weren't wild with that. The third out back in the top of the third inning. I think they thought Christensen fouled the ball up his foot, and they didn't call mm. that. And they called it. It was a fair ball. Round ball to short throw to by Rakin. Nice play by Kaplan to dig it out. Yeah, I remember that. You questioned that yourself a little bit. If that was uh, in play or if that was a foul ball. Brady Coleman, the batter, he's 0 for 1. He has walked and he has flown out to center. Now it's gotten darker again. Yeah, I couldn't rely on the sun to stay out for too long here. It's yeah. still April. Ball two. It's a worm burner to That's third. It's going to be. Grunberg throws him out. Didn't know if they would uh, get to him quick enough there. A good play there at third by Grunberg. That uh, took a while to get down there. Yeah. Good throw, though. Pollock, the batter, he has grounded into a force out and walked, and he scored. Last inning, 0 for 1. And Rochester has only one hit in this game, but it was a big hit by Brady Beck back in the second inning. Oh, yeah. RBI double. However, Culver Academy pitchers have walked six. Inside, 3 0. Do you think about giving Pollock the green light here on 3 0 with nobody on and two out? I think I think they think about it. I don't know if they're going to do it, but. Strike. He was taken on that one. That was a nice pitch. I don't know that he was taken on that one. I thought he was looking at that one being a little bit low. And 
was just a nice pitch by Tennyson. Yeah. So now full count. Rounder left side. Backhanded by Rakin. Throw to first. Got him. Wow. That was a great throw. He even had to double clutch a little bit to get that over there. For Rochester in the bottom of the fourth, one, two, three. And at the end of four innings, it's Rochester four and Culver Academy three. And you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field, as we move into inning number five. Zebra is holding on to that 4-3 lead. No, uh, no runs across for either team there in the fourth inning, Val. So both teams' defense is doing well. And for the Zebras, they yeah. uh, seem to be kind of finding their groove here on the defensive side. Yeah, Culver Academy with a couple of nice defensive plays that inning. Uh, actually, really all three plays. It was a 1-2-3 inning, and all three plays were nice defensive plays. Um, you know, Kaplan had a nice dig on the ball that Casper hit. And a uh, nice strong throw by Grunberg to get Coleman, and a nice play by Rakin to get Pollock. So, yeah, that was an impressive defensive inning for this kind of young Culver Academy team. Again, Rakin and Grunberg are both sophomores. Speaking of Rakin, he is leading off things here in the top of the fifth, and it'll be followed by Stockton and Grunberg. Rakin is 0 for 1. He has flown out to left and flown out to center. That fly out to center was a sacrifice fly back in the second. Pop up foul. Cypher discards the mask and makes the catch. One up, one down here in the top of the fifth. Good look at the uh, senior catcher for the Rochester Zebras. Can't hardly uh, believe I'm saying that. I I saw him uh, tonight as I was heading in. I said, "Well, how you doing?" He's like, "Getting old." <laughs> this guy ever leave? Yeah. It's like you have no idea what getting old is, Jake. Foster stocked in the batter. He has reached on an error and struck out. I actually uh, met his girlfriend's grandfather yesterday. Inadvertently uh, was over at the uh, Bell Museum in Mentone. And uh, the curator of the museum, they're looking to set up uh, phones and internet over there. And we got talking and he's like, yeah, my granddaughter dates, dates Jake Cipher. I'm like, huh. She goes to Warsaw or went to Warsaw? Uh... Mm -hmm. I think she goes to Valley. Oh. Line Ooh. drive, base hit, right center. Well struck by St Stockton. Rand Beck runs it down and holds for Stockton to a single. Going to bring up Grunberg. We talked about Grunberg as a hitter. He had been four for four on the season coming into today's game, but he's 0 for 2 in this game. Struck out swinging in the first, grounded to short back in the third. Inside, 1-0. Yeah. Oh. Went down to uh, Kokomo yesterday to Bel Air, um, where the Rochester is going to have their prom. And I tell you what, <laughs> that is a beautiful facility. Real, yeah, okay. Looking looking forward to uh, our – that one gets away from back. Yeah, it's a wild throw by Reinerts. Stockton's going to try for third, and the throw is going to be way late. And Gavin Young just able to catch the throw. He, it's an E1. And all of a sudden, Culver Academy has a runner at third with one out. Let's see how Coach Good is going to play the infield here. I, th I imagine he's going to – he'll trade a run for an out here. Mm -hmm. uh, if they do tie it, so be it. But I don't think he wants to risk a big inning. Two and oh. Ball ball? Yeah, looking forward to our uh, annual red carpet that we do every year for the intro at the prom. I think this is like our 12th or 13th year, year we've done that. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, that's a beautiful facility. I, I tell you, was what. it built recently? 2017. Okay. The uh, they own Posterific, which is actually right across the road from there. They originally okay. bought the ground as a uh, parking lot, and then their background was in hotels in Chicago, and they decided to build this facility and. I think it'll hold, what'd she say, uh, five or 600 people. She's done a bunch of weddings, I guess. I think there's like seven proms there this year, she said. Based on balls, Reinhardt really wanted that one. But Grunberg walks and puts runners at first and third with one out for Preston Jessen. Jessen has flown out to right and grounded to short. He, can't, he was 5 for 6 on the season prior to today. So his average has gone down from 833 to 625. Let's see if uh, Clover Academy gets frisky in the bases here. Low. Tanner Reinerts is pretty frustrated out there. Here's the runner at first, and he'll steal second. No throw. Stockton holds on at third. And Cypher will go halfway between the mound and home plate just to talk to Reinerts. Jake talks a lot about being kind of a Amateur psychologist out there. Hmm. Two and zero. Puts on a bunt. Throw to first. Out. So an RBI sc scoring on the play is Stockton, and Grunberg moves to third. Sacrifice one three. Two down in the inning. I, I think Tanner thought he could get the out at home plate, but it wouldn't have been easy. Yeah. And once he bobbled it, he just took the out at first. So runner at third with two outs, and the count is now 1-0 oh on Jack Christensen. Christensen's 0 for 1. He has walked, and he has grounded back to the pitcher. So all straight back, 1-1. One and one. That one make you flinch? A little bit. <laughs> Zebra's at Caston tomorrow. Caston's got a game with Clinton Prairie tonight at Lope Stadium. Ball two. Line drive to right. Can Brent oh. the can get in? It's going to go all the way to the warning track. A run is in. Stopping at second with an RBI double is Jack Christensen. That's his first hit of the season. And it's an RBI double to give Culver Academy a 5-4 to four lead. Almost made that play. That would have been a spectacular play out there in right. So that puts the Eagles back out in front here, five to four. So trying to find that last out of the inning for the Zebras. Chopper back to the mound. Ryan to Brady Beck for the out. That retires Tennyson and that retires the side. For Culver Academy, they scored two runs in the inning on two hits. No errors and one left. And to four and a half, Culver Academy leads Rochester five to four. And you're watching RTC TV four.
Back here, Bob Copeland Field moving into the bottom of the fifth. The Eagles put on two more in the top and regained the lead five to four here over the Zebras. Now you can see some frustration building on the face of Tanner Reinhardt's there in that. Uh, I think he kind of felt like some of those balls that he was uh, getting called balls, he thought might mm -hmm. have been strikes, but that's like what you said with uh, Jake. You got to find a way to work through that because if you start getting frustrated and the ump sees it, it, it seems like that strike zone just shrinks even more. Yeah. If yeah. you if you show that frustration to the umpire. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Tanner's going to lead things off here for the zebras. Well. Take it out on take it out on the opposing team's pitcher. Right. Reinerts will be followed by Cipher and Young. Softball update: Rochester leads Culver Community nineteen to two, top of the fifth. Fly ball, left center, hit pretty well. Hit really well. Hit really really well. He hit it out. That's uh, that's one we're, way to do it. We're turning on the announcer jinx, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it's now the announcer blessing. A solo homer for Tanner Reiner. It's the second of the season, and this game is tied at five. And that ball got lost. Mm -hmm. And that ball was. Well, you could tell when the center fielder and the left fielder just kind of turned. They didn't really run that they knew uh, how well Tanner had hit that. That was a no-doubter. The only bad thing about it was that the bases were empty, I guess. Yeah. But that ties us back up at five for Jake Cipher. Foul ball, one and one the count. Ball two. It was interesting going back down to Eastern last week about how many of the people in the Eastern press box knew who Jake was because he plays out of a travel team out of Kokomo. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And uh, out, of the, out of the Legion team out of Kokomo. So. Hmm. So he, he knew that city very well before he chose to go to IU Kokomo. Mm-hmm. Two-two count here for Jake. Ball three. Look like maybe a little change up there, but uh, down in the dirt. Just inside. Well, I don't think anybody's arguing that the strike zone's, I think, been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. And it's been pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been tight, that's for sure. There's no uh, corner of the plate. It's right over the plate or it's a ball. So Cypher leaves the game and Caleb Lutz enters as a courtesy runner at first and Gavin Young is the batter. First pitch is way high. So Tennyson retired six of the first seven batters he faced. But the eighth batter he faced was Reinert, so he had a homer, and the ninth batter was Cypher, who just walked. So 1-0 oh, oh, yeah. the count to Gavin Young, who has lined to center and quote-unquote grounded into a force out. That was actually a shallow pop fly that dropped, and then they threw to third. 
Fly ball to left, hit pretty well, hit very well. Hit back to the wall, and that ball is gone. He hit it out. Forever young. <laughs> As Gavin just cranked that ball, I was kind of expecting it to hook foul, but it never hooked. Yeah, yeah, it looked like he kind of got ahead of that one, but boy. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a hanging breaking ball. Yeah. Or a hanging off speed something, and Gavin just tomahawked it out of here. Rochester wow. leads 7-5. to five. Talking about the bats getting going here in the uh, bottom of the fifth. Two home runs and three runs scored now for the Zebras. And that uh, academy lead was short-lived. The Zebras back out in front by two now. And we still don't have any outs. Colton Ferva to the batter. Ferv is 0 for 1. Reached on an error in the second inning and scored, and he walked back in the third. And Colton Fly gets a ball to left one. center. That's hit pretty well. That's hit pretty well. One hops the wall. That should be extra bases. And Ferb will hold up at second as Rakin takes in the cutoff throw. So Tennyson was really kind of cruising along. Yeah. And the first four batters this inning, homer, walk, homer, double. And we're going to have a timeout here as uh, the coach is going to come out and talk things over with his pitcher as uh, all of a sudden the sun goes down and the bats warm up here yeah. for the Zebras. Rochester only had one hit the first four innings of this game, but three hits already in the bottom of the fifth, and we don't even have an out yet. And that will be all for Tennyson. As Let's see here. I think Quig's going to come in and pitch. Menard was out of the game. Now he's back in the game. No. Uh, Rakin's going to come in and pitch. Now it's looking for Boulder Academy, number 24, Rakin. All right, third pitcher of the evening here for the Eagles, and he's coming into a situation trailing by two with one on and nobody out. Final score from softball, Rochester beats Culver Community 19-2 to two in five innings. So last night's game here was uh, supposed to be the home opener versus Pioneer. That game will now take place on Thursday of next week. So it's going to be a bu busy uh, weekend and week coming up here for the Zebras. Looks like the weather might be uh, turning a little bit towards uh, actual spring weather. Monday, I heard, was supposed to be... Uh, yeah, and then getting really cool and rainy next weekend, next like, Thursday and Friday. <laughs> so, again, Rochester's upcoming schedule at Caston tomorrow morning at 11, and then a JV game will follow at around 1 p.m. A home game with Delphi here at 5.30 on Monday. The conference opener will be at home against Southwood here on Wednesday, and then a home game against Pioneer here on Thursday. So those are, those are the next four. In case you're wondering about Rochester softball, they've got a home game against Eastern on Monday, a home game with Southwood on Wednesday. Um, and uh, Brand Beck will take low. I think that, and then uh, I know that Rochester's traveling to Twin Lakes next Friday, the softball team. Hmm. That's a new addition to the schedule. In the dirt. 
Like new as in this week or new as in this year? New as in this year. Okay. Two and oh. Fall off. Well, going from Tennyson to Rakin, I mean, this is like going from a a Yugo to a Ferrari. Rakin throws a lot harder. Why did I say Yugo? No, absolutely nobody knows what I'm talking about. Ball three. I'm just revealing my age, and I, that's not what <laughs> I... Well, I, I, I do actually know what a Yugo is. I never had one, but our uh, our health teacher and current Rochester resident, uh, Ron Stevens. There goes the runner. He's going to steal it, and it's a base on balls on top of all that. So a stolen base and a walk. Famously had a Yugo pretty much throughout uh, my time in high school at Culver. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun with that little car. It would do things in the snow that you wouldn't uh, think a little three-cylinder could do. <laughs> Throw over to first. Randbeck barely had a lead, and Kaplan didn't catch the ball anyway. So first and third, nobody out. Brady Beck is up. He has doubled and struck out, one for two with an RBI. Grunberg now playing shortstop. Quig at third. Pitch in the dirt. Throw down to second. Got him. Got him. Boy, that was a really nice throw by Stockton. Mm -hmm. He had tried making his first couple of throws down there were not pretty at all. That one was a laser. That one was really nice. And a nice dig by Grunberg as well. No, one went over to the shortstop, and he wasn't covering. He yeah. was at short. Count is, that's a called strike, and the count is now one and one on Brady Beck. Strike. Is it one and one? Yeah. It's one, one and two. two. One so and two. Okay. Brady's got to be in protect mode here. You want to get this run in. And it looks like he might do it. Fly ball to center. It's caught. Throw is not going to be cut off, and that's a sacrifice fly. Boy, that's a heck of an at bat for Brady Beck. Mm -hmm. It's two RBIs on the game, and both of his RBIs came with two strikes on the count. Yeah. The double came on an 0-2 pitch, the sack fly on a 1-2 pitch. Zebras now lead 8-5. You know, for, for somebody who hasn't played since, what, 12U days? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's impressive. I mean, I tried it when I was a senior in high school. I tried to do what Brady's doing, and I made it like three weeks. It's not easy. <laughs> right, and so a lot of it is kind of the – Kind of just making a decision. Again, what you have, what, like half a second to decide after the ball leaves the pitcher's hand mm -hmm. whether it's going to be to whether you to decide whether you're going to swing or not. But again, the, and the coaches have raved about Brady's work ethic. He says he's the hardest working kid on the team. Did he go? He did not go to the base umpire, so the count is 2 and 2 on Parker Casper. Casper is 0 for 1. He's flown out, sacrificed flying, and he grounded as short as last time up. I think I told you about the story, but I joked with Brady when he. I said, when you know, when you're wrestling, you you kind of seem a little small out there. You're like 255, and you're wrestling out of these 280 pound guys. Baseball, you're big. Mm hmm. <laughs> wow, that's the second that's the second time we've seen one go behind the uh, batter. Yeah. By a different pitcher now. Yeah, just a curveball that got away. So three and two. Golf to left. It's interesting, Corey Good is not coaching third base. Is that coach... Uh, Who that is? He's not coaching third. He's in the dugout. Base on balls. Casper Ward. Well, the inning continues here. Coleman up. Let's see if Casper's on the move. Pitches outside. Come on, come on. 
And Culver Academy on their third pitcher this game, and they've got a home game with Marquette Catholic tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Fly ball, foul. Out of play. Kelly gave that a chase. Ran out of room. Brady Coleman is 0 for 2. He has walked, he has flown out to center, and he's grounded to third. One and two. You know, Coach, it's uh, the work that Coach Guard puts in, by the way. I mean, they've been having some camps this week for wrestling. Swing and a miss. That's strike three, but they're going to have to complete the out at first base. But Coleman didn't realize kind of what was going on, and he is thrown out. If Brady had busted it right out of the box, he might have had a chance, but he was looking where the ball was, and that's a strikeout. So that retires the side. Strikeout number one for Rakin. Rochester scores four in the inning on three hits. No errors, one left. End of five innings. Rochester leads Culver Academy 8-5, to five, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field, as we move into the top of the sixth inning. Well, we had uh, no runs scored in the fourth inning. We had six total runs scored in the fifth inning for those going to the Rochester Zebras, who now lead 8-5 to five after five innings. So I'm not going to say they're comfortable, but uh, sure is nice to be ahead by three versus down by three. Yeah. Uh, and meanwhile, Tanner Reinders' day is done on the mound, and we're about to see Parker Casper on the hill. Shows you where my mind is. I saw number 11, and I'm thinking Reinerts. <laughs> But that wasn't uh, Tanner. That was his brother that wore number 11. Yep. That's been a couple of years ago. <laughs> bull and the bull and the buck. When did Kyle graduate? Was he a 20? Uh, 21? Yeah, that's what I want to say. Strike. Oh, you got that one. Nice pitch there on the inside corner, one and two. Fly ball to center. Going back on it and making the catch, that is Fervida. I was wondering who was out there. So Tommy Kelly's the first out here in the top of the sixth. Okay, I think what happened there is Reinhardt's moved from pitcher to third base. Young moved from third base to left field. Further to move from left field to center field. Gotcha. Casper from center field to pitcher. Oh, and won the count to Jack Kaplan. He has reached on an infield single and grounded to first. Kind of once you see them kind of rotate, you, then you'll figure it out and we'll get it. <laughs> It'll be easier as we move forward. Oh, and two. Just off the outside corner. Again, that's it's been consistent. He has not called that pitch a strike all the game either way. Nor do I think was that a strike anyway. Ooh, Good. change. For, yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. He's got kind of a funky arm angle. Yeah. And that ball just, the bottom dropped out of that one. Good pitch by Casper. Two up, two down. I don't think that one had uh, crossed over the grass and uh, dirt line when uh, the batter was swinging at it. Mm -hmm. That'll bring up the senior uh, third baseman, Jack Quigg. He is 0 for 1. Hit by a pitch, walk, and a grounder to short. Ball two. Ball 
all three. Rochester had 14 hits today in softball. 19 runs on 14 hits. 13 of the 14 hits were singles, and Aubrey Wilson had a double. Strike. I wouldn't Wilson. expect too much different from her. She's been yep. Two hits each for Aubrey Wilson, Braylon Hunter, Bree Rensberger, and Micaiah Harding all had two hits and two RBIs each, and Mad Miley Heinzman had two hits and three RBIs. Mia Hadeshall had a hit, uh, two walks, and two RBIs, and Dara Strasser had two hits. Rounder to third, not hard hit. Reinerts. Safe. Infield single for Quigg. Brady had to go up a little bit for that one, and I think he just just a hair off of the bag there. It was a really slow hit ball there. It was a close play at first. Now Rakin. Swing and a miss. Is that a little slider there? I think so, yeah. It looked like it kind of went away. Again, both of these freshmen, Casper and Coleman, are pitchers as well. Grounder to third. Knocked down by Reiner, but that's going to be a base hit. So back-to-back -back infield hits. And now Foster Stockton comes up representing the tying run. Looks like we might have a quick inning, but uh, the Eagles able to stay alive with two outs and yeah. the runners on. So, Rakin did a nice job, kept his hands back, and yeah, able to pull it down the line and hit it pretty hard. Stockton has reached on an error. He has struck out and he has singled, so he's one for three. He scored a run. He's ahead in the count here, one and zero. Oh. Grounder to short. Pollock to second. In time for a force out, and that retires the side. Brady Coleman ran over to cover, and they do get the inning ending out. No runs, two hits. No errors, two left in the top of the sixth. At the end of five and a half, Rochester leads Culver Academy 8-5, to five, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back here at Bob Copeland Field, moving into the bottom of the sixth. The Zebras still in front, 8-5. to five. Casper looked really good there in the top, coming in in relief. But the Eagles still able with two outs. They got runners on first and second there, Val, but the uh, the grounder and the yeah. Zebras able to uh, get out of that inning unscathed. Yeah, and um, he, he was able to change speeds, and he was really able to – I mean, he wasn't afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. Mm -hmm. And that's um, – sometimes you worry about that for a young pitcher. Popped up first base and making the catch is Kaplan. So Carson Pollock pops to first with the first out here in the sixth. Casper pitched against Plymouth – the other day on Tuesday, one and two-thirds inning, seven hits, nine runs, six earned. Mm -hmm. So for, and that, would, that would mean a lot if he could come in and get some success. And to get knocked around like that by a 4A team, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be good for his confidence. But he's still got three more outs to get. Ooh, that was a nice breaking ball by Rakin. Rakin finding a little groove here. That's called the Okamos outside. I don't know. <laughs> He's from Okamos. We've always been pop Steve and I have always been popular in Okamos, but only more so now. Line drive foul. We talking sports with Val today. We did a special segment just for the audience in Okamos. <laughs> Chopper to third. Kind of a room service hop for Quig. 
Oh, they just do get him. Ooh. Two up, two down. They'll bring up Cypher. Another nice curveball. High and outside. Looks like Rakin, even though he throws hard, I think he has better command of his breaking ball than his fastball. I wanted to, well, again, <laughs> just, okay, now that was the announcer's jinx. As mm -hmm. I said, it looked like he had better, con then he throws a really nice fastball there. You don't slip many fastballs behind Jake Cipher that easily. Strike him out swinging and a pitch in the dirt. Throw by Stockton over to Kaplan. Is in time to complete the strikeout and retire the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the sixth. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of six, Rochester leads Culver Academy 8-5, to five, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field, moving into the seventh. If the Zebras can hold... The Eagles to two or less runs here. They can pick up the win here. And Gavin Young being called on here for Rochester in the seventh. Yeah, uh, Gavin pitched on Tuesday against Culver, against Plymouth. He allowed two runs, but both of the runs were unearned. And Gavin... His ERA is zero on the year, and this is his fourth appearance. Three and a third innings, two hits, six runs, but as we mentioned, no earn runs, but he's he's walked five and struck out only one. So, again, that, that that's again has you maybe nervous. Again, Rochester as a team had walked 37 and 38 and two-thirds innings. A walk, basically a walk an inning. Mm -hmm. That's That's not great. You really want to... Need to cut down on that number. I, I do like what Coach Good's doing here, though, with Casper, uh, because, like you said, he got dinged around a little bit in that Plymouth game. Came in, had a really nice inning, and then yeah. uh, so let him kind of uh, feel good about that inning. Bring in Gavin Young here to close this one out. Yeah, Parker came in with an ERA of 13.26. So that's going to be really great for him. Yeah, but he got some good results. Grunberg is 0 for 2. He struck out, grounded to short, and walked. And he came around to score back in the fifth inning. 1-0. and And just as we uh, and again, start this inning yeah. here, it's starting to rain. And Corey Good likes to, you know, he, he I didn't really thought of him as kind of a coach who liked to use a closer. Um, but he kind of used it with Hunter Campbell last year to some good uh, success. And so mm -hmm. I, I think he'd maybe like to see if Gavin can, can handle that role here. Mm -hmm. Can he be that man? Mm-hmm. Ball three. And Gavin had trouble with a grip there on the ball. Strike one. I think even Tarek McLaughlin had been used as kind of a closer mm -hmm. from time to time. Just throw one inning. Don't worry about Pacing yourself. There's one inning all out. Gets that count back to full as the uh, rain really starting to come down here now. Base on balls. Grunberg aboard to lead off the seventh. That is the fifth walk by Rochester pitchers in this game. That one in the dirt. There goes the runner trying to advance. Throw down. Safe. A wild pitch. Jessen has flown out to right, grounded to short, 
and had an RBI sacrifice bunt his last time out. So 0 for 2 with an RBI. Foul ball 2 and 1. Looked like he might have thrown a curveball there 2 and 0. Oh, the th oh, that was strange. The umpire really shouldn't have touched that ball. But I get well, if it was a foul ball, then I guess it was a dead ball. So I guess the umpire could have. Yeah, never mind. Ball three. Base on balls, first and second with nobody out. Mound visit coming up. One of those odd situations here that you get with the uh, weather in Indiana. The sun is shining and it's pouring. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you're getting wet, at least the sun's shining on you, right? Yeah. Lightning, or are they just looks like we're going to have a bit of a delay here. Yeah. Did he say thirty minutes? Yeah, it sounded like it. Hmm. So six fifty-four. So it's what thirty minutes, and then after every every lightning strike after that, they basically start the clock again. Right. All right, here we go. Okay, Christensen up. First pitch of the A-B. Strike. So it's 7.22. I think it was 28 minutes ago when they walked off the field. I don't think anybody's yeah. upset that it wasn't you exactly half an hour. You started two minutes early. Yeah. 0-2. Oh Zebra's trying to get back up over 500 and trying to hand Culver Academy their first loss. Fly ball. Right center field. Caught out there. By Casper, who's back out in center, and the runners hold. I believe that's Casper back in center field. I believe Fervid is back in left field. And Young have been playing left field the whole game is back on the mound. First pitch strike to Menard. Menard is uh, 0 for 1. And Young ahead gets in the count 0 and 2. So Tennyson... Menards are re-entered. Tennyson took the Ed Bats in the fourth and fifth inning out of this spot. But now Tennyson's back out and Menards back in. 0-2. Fly ball to right. It drops. Everybody advances a base. I think Brand Beck got a, didn't get a great jump on that ball, and it wound up dropping in front of him. Yeah, I don't think he got the read on it. He was he started in, and then he thought thought maybe he was going too hard, and we'll see how that goes because uh, Gavin was looking really good 
got the first out and was looking like he was going to get a quick second out there, and now the bases are loaded. Strike one to, and that kind of is now one and one to Tommy Kelly. Ball got away from Cypher, but the runners weren't going to take any chances. Again, not a whole lot to gain if, for Grunberg. Now we're taking a chance down by three in the seventh inning. One and one. Kelly is one for two in the game. Walk, a single, and a fly out to left. Outside. Two and one. Ooh, that's a high heater there. Yeah, had good late movement on that one. Mm -hmm. Two and two. Tried to change. Big, uh, big pitch coming up here for uh, Gavin. It was the right idea. Three and two. Got, Got him. him. Oh, that was good. Strikeout number one for Young. Two outs in the inning. And that will bring up the freshman first baseman, Jack Kaplan. He is Culver Academy's final hope. He is one for three in this game. Swing and a miss. One for three with an RBI. He had an RBI infield single back in the second. That one had some nice movement tailing away there. Fouled off 0-2. Eagles down to their final strike. Senior pitching to a freshman. Oh. Hit him with a pitch. Ouch, all the way around. Ouch for Kaplan, but an ouch for Young, too. He did not want to do that. He did not want to hit a batter with a head up in the count 0-2. Oh, and, and it's now 8-6, to six and the tying, potential tying run is in scoring position. Potential go-ahead run is on base, and the lineup turns over to Jack Quigg. First pitch is inside. Quigg has gotten on base three times. Hit by a pitch in the first, walk in the second. He grounded to short in the fourth, but he had reached on an infield signal back in the sixth. Fly ball on the left field line. Foul oh, ball, just oh, foul. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of mean, people were uh, holding their breath there, there was, on both yeah, sides. Raken was in the on-deck circle. He was jumping up and down. I mean, he, again, they weren't arguing. They were just no, – no, It was definitely excited. a foul ball. They were excited, yeah. though. That was yeah. – That probably would have tied us up. Yep. Yeah. Young gets a new baseball. And Rochester beat Culver Academy by 10 run rule last year at the Academy. This one's this one's a nail biter. One and one to Quig. Grounder, left side. Pollock feeds Coleman covering for a force out. And the Zebras win it. The Zebras win it. Had to wait a half an hour. It took six minutes to finish this one off, and the uh, Rochester Zebras. Come out successful winners, eight to six over the Eagles. Boy, Gavin Young did a really nice job coming back after the lightning delay. Yeah. Oh my God. He faced five batters after the lightning delay, got three of them out, and the only two got on base were a a bloop single and a hit batsman. Boy, he he didn't make it easy on himself, and the defense, did, in a way, didn't make it easy on him either. But boy, he he gets a tough hitter and a quick to end the game. And Rochester beats Culver Academy 8-6. to six. Yeah, I thought Gavin, uh, coming out of that delay, like you said, during the delay, it's like, what's uh, what's this going to look like? And, and he did a really good job. I mean... Got the first two outs, you know, no outs, two on, coming out of a, rain, uh, a lightning delay, and all kinds of things could happen there, and, and he did a really good job. So 
Let's take a quick break here again, and uh, Val's going to total up the stats, and we will uh, come back and wrap things up here from Bob Copeland Field. The Zebras are successful in their home opener over the Culver Academy Eagles, winning 8-6, to six, moving their record to 4-3 and three on the season. Be back here in just a moment on RTC TV4. 